Welcome to week seven. It's the final in our discipleship series today. And today we look at celebration. Over the last seven weeks, we've looked at how we nurture ourselves in our walk with Jesus. And we've looked at some useful tools to help build our faith so that we can be faithful followers of Jesus. Uh, grab your Bible and we'll be reading from Psalm 100 today. So far we've looked at worship, we've looked at community, breaking bread, serving others, prayer. Last time it was sharing our faith and today we come to our final in the series, it's celebration. Our guiding scripture for this series has been Acts chapter 2 verses 43 to 47. Let me read that. Everyone was amazed by the many miracles and wonders that the apostles worked. All the Lord's followers often met together, and they shared everything they had. They would sell their property and possessions, and give money to whoever needed it. Day after day they met together in the temple. They broke bread together in different homes, and shared food happily and freely, while praising God. Everyone liked them, and each day the Lord added to their group others who were being saved. That's Acts chapter 2, verses 43 to 47. And as I've said before, the key theme for me that jumps out of the reading from Acts 2 is that of generosity. Uh, generosity underpins everything that happened in the early church. As we share, as we connect with each other, as we live our faith, that's what we're called to do. And those early disciples of Jesus, they were generous with their time, they were generous with their possessions, they were generous with their money, they were generous with their hospitality. So they connected and they shared. And we're told by the writer of Acts that everyone liked them and the Lord added to their numbers. What a fun bunch of people to be around. And of course, God calls all of us to celebrate. And today we look at celebration. We have one scripture today for celebrating, and that scripture is Psalm 100. So if you haven't grabbed your Bible, push pause now and grab it. I'm reading Psalm 100, and I'm reading from the contemporary English version of the Bible. Shout praises to the Lord, everyone on this earth. Be joyful and sing as you come in to worship the Lord. You know the Lord is God. He created us and we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep in his pasture. Be thankful and praise the Lord as you enter his temple. The Lord is good. His love and faithfulness will last forever. That's Psalm 100. It's a psalm of praise. It's one of those psalms that Israel sung when everything was going well. So the part for me that jumps out of Psalm 100 is the opening line. Shout praises to the Lord, everyone on this earth. Be joyful and sing as you come in to worship the Lord. We hear in Acts how the people were a fun bunch to be around. They shared, they worshipped, they were together all the time, we're told. And in a healthy community, we can't help but celebrate. There is so much to be thankful for so much to praise God for. And when we celebrate, we bring to the forefront thankfulness and gratefulness. We acknowledge God's work both in our life and in our world. We then centre God in creation. In our week where we study prayer, I talked about the mnemonic ACTS. ACTS meaning adoration, confession, thanksgiving and seeking. When we celebrate, first and foremost, we're doing that adoration. We're acknowledging God. We're worshipping God for all that God has done, for all that God is doing, and for all that God will do in the future. 
In Psalm 100, we heard, shout praises to the Lord, be joyful and sing. The Lord is God, he created us. Be thankful and praise the Lord. The Lord is good. And it's as simple as that, isn't it? We need to find ways and things to praise God for. So what is it that you do, or where is it that you go, that enables you to sing God's praise? Whatever it is that you do, wherever it is that you go that enables you to sing God's praise, then I encourage you to take note of that. Take note of it, because it's likely that this is something that's really important for you, enabling you to praise God. It's probably an important part of how God has created you uniquely. So to be able to celebrate God and what God's doing, make sure you treasure that. Treasure what it is you do that enables you to praise God. Treasure where it is that you go that enables you to praise God. The early church was very much born out of sense of gladness. You know, think back to Pentecost. Fire and flame in that upper room. And then the language spilling out of that room and into the community. Telling everyone of the story of Jesus. And they all heard in their birth language they could all celebrate and join in what had happened, bringing many, many, many people to faith. We're told over those first few days, thousands of people came to hear the message and came to faith. There was gladness amongst those early disciples. Jesus had taught them, he had lived and journeyed with them. Then he had died. And they thought it was all over, but he rose from the dead. And they were incredibly glad. They were joyous that he was alive. And this was a story that carried them through. This was a story that they shared with great gladness with those around them. You know, gladness defined them. And gladness can be all around us at times. Gladness can be static, can't it? Like the excitement of winning something. Gladness can also be the connection between two people when a significant change happens, maybe when a relationship is restored, or when a new relationship begins. Gladness can also celebrate the end of something, like the end of a war. Gladness can also celebrate the beginning of something new, like a new baby. It can also be the satisfaction of a job well done. Sometimes, though, gladness can also be difficult. At those times where we're glad to feel as well someone we love deeply. At times with gladness we farewell them, but grief is mingled in there with the hope of eternal life later. And along with gladness comes generosity. When we're happy in our lives, we live lives then where we want to share it with those around us. Gladness, of course, is a countercultural response to greed. With greed, we want to keep what we have for ourselves. But with gladness, we celebrate the God of abundance, and that leads us to share generously. And of course, we cannot be fully glad if we're harboring resentment or unforgiveness. Forgiveness and reconciliation. They go hand in hand with gladness. And we need to extend this reconciliation and this forgiveness to everyone who needs it from us. We need to be generous with our forgiveness. Celebration has a lot to do with our underlying values. And celebration can be lived out when we show this forgiveness, when we show gladness, when we show joy. Celebration very much draws our faith together. Today, may you celebrate all that God does in and through you. Amen.
as we come now to a time of reflection, I'll invite you into confession with me. So let's spend a moment in silence, confessing and remembering before God what we've got wrong, the things that separate us from God and from others. In silence before God, we remember our sins. Now that we've confessed our sins to God, let us hear God's forgiveness. Gracious God, we know that through Jesus we have forgiveness of those sins we've just confessed to you. And in the name of Jesus, we claim that forgiveness for ourselves. And together we say, Amen. So as we now celebrate What's something that you're thankful for? What about, what about the things that you celebrate? Is there something you're celebrating this week? Let us pray now. Father, we adore you and we lift up your name. Bless those that sing and speak and visit with others. And we praise and thank you for prayers answered. And for those prayers not answered as we wish, help us to still sing your praises. In the blessed name of the Trinity, and through Jesus we ask and pray. Amen. And a blessing as we finish today. Go encouraged to act graciously and to love abundantly. Go to act honestly and humbly in the ways of Jesus. And go with the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. And so, till next week, see you next week. And next week we begin Advent. And for Advent, we're following the theme of the Jesse tree. And you'll find more about that next week. But basically, we're looking at those things leading up to the birth of Jesus. See you then. Have a great week.